welcome back to learning partner so this is just a advanced version of to do app which we are going to do in this video right so this is just a static uh, ui i have created right so you can see we have a form over here where we can enter uh, whatever the task name we have then let's say this is going to be the date by what we need to complete it right then comma separated tags tags is like this task is related to what are the tags just to filter it out right so task can be related to hobby holiday office meeting work educational social travel anything right now on that on below the form we have three button filter by tags so what are the tags we have that will be visible over here so once we click on this this below button will be visible if we click on show all all the tags will all the whatever the task i have created all will be visible and you can see in the table we have checkbox whatever the checked items are there we can assume like that that are completed so if we click on show completed only the checked item means what are the item completed that only be visible so these are nothing but filters so let's say if we click on health right so only task which have the tags health will be visible and we have a delete icon uh, cross icon over also here so if we click on this that particular task will be removed right so these are the basic things which we are going to do obviously again uh, validation we can do but we will try to keep it minimum to the the new things right because to do have so many versions are already there on the youtube or you might have already done but this to do app is more focused on the filtering and everything right and you also you can see it's very interactive ui so if you are preparing for the interview make sure you design something like this you can add your own imagination to this also like colors and everything and post it on the linkedin also so that interviewer or the hr will get back to uh, will get to know like yes you have a nice perspective of ui designing also right so let's start uh this is the existing project i'm using uh, it is already hosted on my github repository and template this ui whatever the ui you can see it is it is also already provided in the template repository right so you can use the basic html and then start working on now so first thing is like we are going to store the data whatever the data you see we are going to store that into the local storage also right so whatever the data you see that we are going to store in the local storage also so first thing we will start from so we will majorly divide the task like first we need to create object and uh, uh, we need to store the data so create object and store task data in local storage right this is going to be the first task so object is nothing but task name due date and the tags right so three field we are going to need so let's go to component.ts now here i will create a class export class task well, let's make it capital right so what are the properties i am going to have in this uh, class like task name colon data type will be string then due date again data type will be string and tags colon data type will be string right then we need to initialize it also it is a class so we can initialize it so this dot task name let's initialize with empty this dot due date let's initialize with empty only and this dot tags is equal to empty right so we have created a uh, class where we are going to have three properties now so class is created now here we need to create the object right so task obj colon data type will be task right rather than writing like this any we have created a class of that object right first task is done now in the constructor we need to initialize it so constructor this dot task object is equal to new task so this is how we are just initializing our object right if you don't want to do this you can simply make it as any and you can create the object right now 
how uh, we have created the class and we have initialized that also now app forms module is already added in my app component but if you don't have you can add it in the import app module and in the import statement for 17 it is something different if you have angular version 17 so in the component only you need to add the import over here like that here you can add forms module if you uh, it is your 17 version okay here you can add like this this is this will be applicable only for the 17 right now now we need to bind this object to our form using ng model so this is the ui so first was text area right so here square bracket round bracket ng model equal to my object dot property uh, property which i will bind is task name let's copy paste then due date here due date i will bind and the last comma separated tags so that will be tags right so i have created object and that object we have binded successfully to our form now next thing is on click of add we need to call our function right so on click of this add task we need to create task and store it into the local storage let me just make this button smaller right so round bracket click event function name will be let's say create new task round bracket right so now we have to create this function so into dot ts let's create this function right so we have on the button click we have called this function now when we are storing the data into the local storage first thing we need to check whatever the data we are not going to store the single object, right? We have to store the list of tasks, means whatever the array we are going to store, that whole array is going to be stored into the local storage. Not a single, single task we are going to store. So for that, let's create an array variable also. Task list, colon. Data type will be task only, but it is going to be array. Let's initialize with empty, right? Now, what we have to do is, First, we have to check on the page load. First, we need to check like if already tasks are there or not, right? So, on the constructor, in the constructor, we will check like if already in the local storage, do we have a task created or not, right? Because if we have already the task created, we just have to push the new task into array and then we are going to store that, right? So, now... on the page load we are going to read the data okay before reading we will just push the data to the local storage now in create new task so basic way will be local storage dot set item right then key advance to do app this is going to be my key and we can now one thing when you are storing the data into the local storage local storage will allow only string type of data right so we need to convert the object into string so json dot stringify right this is the method and here you can send the this dot task object but what this will does this will store a single task into this uh, particular key but we need to store the array of multiple tasks so now before this this is the variable, right? Array variable. So here we have to push this. So this dot task list is equal to, sorry, dot push. And we need to pass this dot task object. Like this, right? So what we have done, on click of create new task, we have stored the object into our array. And this array we will store into local storage, right? So in local storage, we will have the list of tasks. So let's just test this much of code. Right, let's open the debugger and let's test it. So let's say and scrum call at 11 p.m. Let's say I have a task like uh, that is scrum call at 11 p.m. Date will be two days only, right? 
uh, this is work related. Now here you can see we need to enter the data into comma separated. Okay, so work comma, let's say it is a kind of calls and meeting also. Right, so this particular task will be related to all these three tags. Right, now on click of add task, our function will get call. So here you can see in the task list, currently we don't have any data, but in the task object, we have got the, whatever the object we have filled in the form that we have got over here because we have bind this object using ng model on those, on those element, right? Now F10, so you can see in the task list, we have got one element. Now let's go to application and local storage. Let me just clear the local storage. So if you can see currently in the local storage, we don't have any data. Right. But once this line runs, then we will get to see the data. Now this lines got run. Now you can see in the local storage in this particular key, we have got the data. Right. Let's continue. So in currently in the local storage, we have one, one uh, task. Right. Let's try interview call at 2 p.m. Let's say I have to, I have to take an interview at 2 p.m. So again, date is today only. This is, uh, this is the, instead of calls, there are only two tags, the meeting. Now again, if I click on add task, so currently in the task list, we have one element, right? Now we just have, we are just pushing this. Now in task list, we have two element. Now again, the array we are going to store. So it will remove the existing element and it will replace that with the new element, new data. Continue. Let's check the application. Now over here, you can see in the advanced to do app we have got two records but why it is having the same data okay so we need to uh, detach the array so you can see in the both the tasks we have got the same element same data that is because this data task object we are directly pushing to the array element so somewhat it gives the connection so we have to uh, what do we say? Detach the reference of the object and the array. So for that, I will just simply create one more local variable. Task is equal to JSON dot stringify. And we need to provide this task object over there. So what it is doing, it is creating a new local variable and whatever the object we have got that we have stored into this in a string format. So whenever we have to uh, disconnect the reference right so we can use json.stringify because otherwise number of tasks will have the same data whatever the latest data you are going to insert that same data will be over there so we are just detaching the data right so this line will be needed so to detach it but now again we need to convert it back so con constant task obj let's say parse task is equal to now when we have converted the task object into string means in the task we have the string data now we need to convert it again back to the object form so json dot parse this we are doing because same data we are there in the both the elements so this we have to pass it over here what it is saying block scope variable possible okay sorry task we need to pass it over here so we have converted the object whatever the object we have got we have converted that into the string now again we have converted that string data into object form now this object this parse data we are passing to push onto the array right now we are going to store the array so let's just test it now because currently you can see same data was visible so let me remove now let's try. So first was Scrum at 11 p.m. Due date today only. Work. Work later meeting. Add task. So you can see currently task object is in the object form. So once I continue, you can see in the task we have got the whole object converted into the string. Now again we are converting that into the object form. Right? Then we are pushing that data into the task list. Continue. So in the application, one task is there with the scrum at 11. Let's try second task. Interview at 2 p.m. Same data will be there at task. 
Now you can see again, same process. Now in the task list, if you get to see, we have got proper data, right? First was Scrum and then what the interview continue. Now in the application, we have got proper data because earlier it was, uh, it was keeping the reference. So it was just overwriting all the data. So to avoid that, we have just add this logic. Right. So to detach the reference of the object and the variable uh, array, we just have to convert the data to the string again, convert it back to the object form and then converted. We have stored right now in the task list. Now we have got the data, right? So we can use this variable to iterate on the table. So this was the table. Let me remove the static one. Now. This TR is going to be multiple. So here we will use star ng for let task of task list. Right. Now we are going to display the serial number also. So we need the serial number. So for that semicolon, let SR is equal to index property we are store. We are going to store. And here we will print SR plus one because index will start from zero. We don't show zero. So we are just incrementing it. Then here we have to show the task name, right? So task dot task name. Then we have to show the due date. So due date will be over here. Task name, due date. Due date is in the form of date, right? So we can use date pipes. So date ad hyphen mmm hyphen yy, right? And uh, for this, we are going to write a separate logic because uh, tags are multiple, comma separated, right? So first, let it be like that. We have to write some logic. Continue. Now, if you see in the table, we don't have any data, right? But in the local storage, we already have the data, right? So on the page load, we need to read the data from the local storage and store it into our array. So for that, in the constructor, we will read the data from the local storage. So constant local data is equal to local storage dot get item. To read the data from the local storage, we have to use this method. And we have to pass the key. So advanced to do app, this is nothing but the key name, right? So this we have to pass it over here. This will read the data from the local storage. But just to add an extra additional check, if null check we have to add. So local data not equal to null what we are going to do while storing the data into the local storage we have stored that into the string format but if now we have to retrieve it again right we have retrieved but while storing it into the array we just need to convert it back to the array format also so this dot task list is equal to again json dot parse method to convert the uh, convert to convert the string format data again to the object or the array form, we have to use json.parse. So local data, we need to pass it over here. Let's add a debugger and let's debug this also. So on the page load, we are reading the data from the local storage. We are converting that back into the array, array format and we are storing that into the task list. So let's check now. So here you can see constructor got called. So in local data, so in local data, you have got string data. You can see whatever the data was there in the local storage that we have got, but it is in the string format. So you can see it is enclosed in the double course means the data is in the string format. Now data is not local data variable is not null. So it will go inside and it will convert the string format data into array format. So now in the task lead, you can see two tasks are there. Continue. So now in the table, you can see data is visible. Right now, let's try to add one more record. Let's say I have to go to the market. So go to market. Right, this is kind of a task. Due date will be tomorrow, say one. Let's say this is personal and market. Just a tax, something we can identify, add task continue so you can see same data is visible so first two tasks have, was having due date for today and next task was having due, due date of tomorrow right so we are able to create the task we are able to show the task in the table format now if i refresh again the same data is visible right so this thing is done now 
Second thing is like filter by tag, show all and show completed. So uh, first we will complete the show completed. So if I checked over here, right? If I check this, I should make this task as completed. So for that, in the task construct uh, class, I will add one more property that is is completed. That will be Boolean. By default, I will initialize it with false is complete is equal to false. So what I have did, I have created one more property into my class. Now, this property, I will add it to my checkbox. So this is the checkbox so again, square bracket, round bracket, ng model equal to what I have to bind task dot is complete. I have to bind it over here. Let's save and check it now. But once we check it now, we again, we need to store the updated data. Whenever we are changing some data, we need to store immediately that data to the local storage. So if you can see, I am checking it, right? But if I refresh again, same data will be visible because I have not stored that data into the local storage. So once we check that, once we check any checkbox, we need to again store the data into the local storage. So event will be change event. Let's see what uh, it works or not, or, or we, we, we will use ng model change. So on change, we will call what will be on complete round bracket and we need to pass the task. Let's see if we get it or not. debugger let's see the data new this dot task list okay so let's just save and check it if it is properly working or not let me just remove the constructor debugger let's check so now if I checked second one, that is interview at 2 p.m. So event got called. Let's check the task list. Yeah, so you can see this variable got true. You can see remainings are false only, but this variable got true, right? So the change event will work. So once we uh, change, once we change the text checkbox value, this function is getting called and the array in that particular array, that particular object is complete flag is getting true. So what we need to do, we just need to add this line over here. Again, means we are just storing the latest array again into the local storage. So let's just save and check now. Let's say I have done with this scrum call 11. Let's try to reload now. So you can see I, if I even if I'm reloading, I can see that data. Let's uncheck this also, right? So now second task was done. Like we can uh, check this checkbox to know like this task is done, right? Just like that, we can do the remove thing also, right? This remove thing also we can do. So now remove is nothing but we just need to remove the data from the local array, right? Then we will store the array updated array to the local storage. So let's write the event. So this is a that icon, right? So here we need to call our event. So click on remove is my function and we need to pass. We can pass the serial number also, right? So serial number uh, using slice, uh, using splice, we are going to remove the element from the particular array. So it needs index, right? So on remove, this is the function and here we are going from when from front end we are going from html we are going to call this function and we are going to send the parameter that is serial number so that we will get it index colon number right now from array we need to just remove the data so this dot task list dot splice and we have to pass the index and how many records we have to remove so one only and after remove again we need to store the updated array to the local story so this line will be over and over and again right so let's just save and check 
if it is working properly let me just add a debugger make a habit whenever you are writing some code for the first time make sure you debug it properly right if i click on interview at 2 pm i don't want it that interview interview got cancelled so if i click on cancel so here index you can see one zero one now from the array task list at the one location index one we have got the interview at 2 pm that only we have to remove continue continue so in the task list you can see only two elements are there interview got removed and the updated array we are going to store into the local storage that's it so even if i reload you can see interview entry got removed got it so we are able to create new task we are able to mark the task as complete and we are able to remove the task also so three things we have done now coming back to okay one task was remaining like we have to show this task tags as a dynamic right so the tags we have got into the string format but in a comma separated right so inside tags let me just print it task i will just print it over here task dot tags so tags are nothing but comma separated value now we need to convert this comma separated value to the array format right because we have to use the for loop on this button like what are the tags we have that we need to use the for loop so comma separated value is there right so to convert the comma separated values into the array we have to create one function so we can create one function and that will get us the array form data right so get array from comma ring just a function i'm creating and this function we will call from the front end and here it will be string parameter let's say value data type will be string now this function we will call from the front end okay now these buttons are going to be multiple so here i can write star ng for let tag of function i will call and for this function i will pass my tags so task dot tag let's remove the static button okay we need to uh, provide the return type also so return type will be string array why it is saying error yeah we are going to return okay so now this error will come right so now you can see from the front end in the html also we can call the function like this normally you might have known like we can pass the variable over but in some scenarios we have to achieve something like this so you can pass a function to array also so we have called this function and we have to we have passed the tag also right so here now we have got the comma separated value now that comma separated value we have to convert into the array so constant arr is equal to value dot split and uh, with what we have to split so with comma we have to split and this array we are going to return so let's just save and check if it is working properly now why it is both time health and health let's see something is not correct yeah data is not coming proper let's try to debug that code so this is the function let's reload task dot tags correct only so now you can see in the value we have got work hyphen meeting so with split we have got array of work and the meeting right that we have written then we have got personal and the market now that also we have got converted into array and that we are returning but why it is visible health and health okay got it so here the same task is there so now we have to iterate uh, use the interpolation let's save 
now it will be proper so you can see scrum at 11 meeting has the tags like to work and the meeting and for go to market it has a personal and the market so this also we have done next thing so task creation is done uh, make it complete is done remove is done uh, tags also we have shown now we have to filter the actual part what we what this video is focusing on so if we say filter by tag if we click on filter this below buttons will be visible uh, this below button will be visible once we click on the filter by tag but this data like whatever the data you can see this we should get from whatever the tags we have right whatever the tags we have that data we have to filter it out over here right means let's say i have uh, 10 tasks and in that 10 tasks whatever the tags i have created that whole tags should come over here so that i should be i should be able to filter it out right or we can keep it as static like we know like these are the various tags i can enter so that tags i will put it over here so let's create a let's create an array of tags also like what number of various tags i can have so that will be tags list it will be array of string right this is an array of string so let's say work health market meeting calls let's say i have to work on defects also defect is kind of a tag let's say i am going to work on a story so story let's say interview related interview tag so, so many tags we have already created now these tags we will use it on the for loop on the tags button so this is nothing but that button right so here i will use the for loop so star ng for let tag of my array that is tag list so let me remove all those and here we will show the tags so now our tags button is also dynamic let's save and check right so tag buttons is also dynamic now this tags button will be only visible if i click on filter by tags right so let's create a flag for that is tag filter colon boolean is equal to true or you can see at the top we have three buttons filter by tag show all show completed so to match either we can create three variables or you can create one variable and store a value into that right so instead of boolean let's say filter type like what type of filter is on it will be string by default we can keep it as empty like no filter is there so now on click of these buttons we are we will create one function so click set filter right this function we will call on all the buttons the top three buttons and we need to pass one variable that will be let's say tags and here show all and here will be show completed so you can see i'm i will be calling of one function from all these three buttons just parameter i'm sending something else so this function i will create and i will give i will get the status right or type what type of filter we have and that filter that type whatever i get i will store into this variable right now so you can see what i have done on this button click I'm calling this function and I'm sending tags or show all or what on which button what I'm on which button I have clicked that particular button something value I'm sending and that value I'm storing into this filter type variable. Now this variable I can use on this row. 
So now this row will be visible. So star ng if. If in this variable we have a value of tags. So let's just save and check. So currently you can see those buttons are not visible. Let me just remove the static class. By default, it will be secondary. Okay, but if I click on filter by tags, you can see that is visible. If I click on show all, that is not visible. On show completed also, it is not visible. But again, if I click on filter by tag, buttons are visible. Now, if I click on any buttons, that should be selected, right? Currently, it is clickable and it is performing also, but this is not coming as a selected. So to achieve that, in this variable, we have the data like on which button we have clicked. So we can use ng class over here. So condition will be if filter tag is equal to is equal to tags, right? Then we have to add this class, otherwise this class. So now instead of this button secondary over here, we will remove it. If filter tag is equal to tags, we will add primary button. Right. So now you can see we are adding a dynamic class. If filter type is having tags value, this class will be added. Otherwise, this class just like this. We have to add it over here, over here. Let's remove this static class. Okay. And the condition only change. This will be show all. This will be show completed. Now it will work properly. So on the page load, we don't have anything in that variable, right? So no button is selected. But if I click on show tags, now you can see that button got selected, right? So this is done, right? Now, now if filter by tag is there and let's say I select on work, so I should be again, this same button should be highlighted thing we have to do. Let's just complete that. So it will be selected tag. Data type will be string. Let's initialize with empty. Now on click of this button also, we are going to set. it. So let's write a click event. Now, on this tag buttons click, we just need to store on which button we have clicked. So I can use this variable and directly assign it over here. What I will assign? Just the tag. Okay. Now let's just print it. So can I can show you. So on button click, in the HTML only, we are trying to set the value. So if I click on market, you can see this is getting changed. Wherever I click, that value is getting stored into that variable. Now that variable I can use to add a dynamic class, right? So again, I will copy this, paste it over here. Let's remove the static class, right? Now condition I will be using is this variable. If this variable is having value is equal to tag, whatever the tag we have, then primary button, let's make it success otherwise secondary button will be visible so let's see now you can see buttons will be getting selected right so wherever i click that button is getting selected right now if i click on market i need to filter the data okay so we have to write the function because we are going to filter on this click so instead of this static instead of doing this over, over here let's write filter tag right now i need to pass the tag over here so i'm creating new function because we on click of this we need to filter it filter the array also so filter tag is the function i will be creating and i'm passing the tag name right so here filter tag and the tag now what i have to do now i have to filter the array using the tag name right so this is just a complicated thing we have to achieve, right? So now in this variable uh, from the local storage, whatever the data in the local storage, we have actual data, right? 
So again, I will try to read that. So local storage data I have read, right? So now in this if statement, again, I will just write uh, or let's create one more variable that will be original data. Task list. And once we read the data, that same data, we will store it over here. This dot task list is equal to this dot task list. So wherever I'm updating the task list, I will uh, uh, store the same data into this another variable. So on, uh, on create also, I will do that same thing. And on complete also, I will just do that same thing. And on remove also, I will just do that same thing. Whenever I'm updating the array, that same data, whatever the array, whatever the data we have in the task list, I'm maintaining that same data into one more variable that is original task list. Right now. In the filter, now we don't need this. So in the filter tag, now we have to filter the data, right? So let's write a constant filter data is equal to. Now we are going to filter the data from the original task list. So this dot original task list dot filter. From bracket, from bracket item arrow function okay now in this filter we are going to compare whatever the tag we have got okay, one more thing we forgot whatever the tag name we have got that we need to store it over here so this dot select tag is equal to tag so that that button will be highlighted right so now in this tag we will get meeting or uh, whatever the tags work or calls or market right whatever the tag name we have got so that we need to fi filter, right? So now in item, we will get the object. So in that tag is that, inside that tag is the, tags is the actual string where we have the comma separated value, right? So now inside this uh, filter function, we are going to again return. Now tags are nothing but this, this number of tags we can have. So tag list dot sum okay this dot tag list dot sum some will find i like at least one LA occurrence is there or not right so round bracket element or let's say tag again arrow operator right and now we have to compare. So from this array, if we are trying to, now we are trying to compare, uh, what do we say? Uh, one array with another array, right? Means we are trying to, uh, we are trying to filter the data from this array with the comma separated value from the task list, right? So here we will return. Now we have to match the data from item dot tags dot includes and what we have to include the tags let me just check it sorry my bad so we don't have to write this much we are just simply going to compare with this so you can see in the filter we are just directly going to compare with item dot tags include whatever the tag name user has clicked right and that data we will store it to our task list so task list is equal to filtered data let's see now let's debug the code let's just add some tasks so that we will be able to filter by Okay, so I have entered some data, right? So, so many different tags are there and proper data is also there. Now, let's see if I click on filter by tags, my tags are visible. Now, if I click on anything particular, now we need to see if it is filtering the data. Let's see if I click on personal, right? So this function got called in the tag name, we have got personal that we have stored into our variable. Now we are comparing with includes like whatever the tag name we have got that we are comparing with the tags right 
So here, if I do F10 and filter data, you can see three elements we have got. Go to market, because in go to market, in tasks, in tags, we have got personal. In visit temple also, we have got personal. And in morning walk also, we have got personal. So that data is visible and that data got filtered, right? So just like that, if I click on meeting, meeting is visible, calls, nothing is there, market, only two options are there, right? Interview, only one option is there. Again, go to personal. So filtering is done, right? So with this piece of code, you will be able to filter the data. Now, if I click on show all, only three three items are visible. All I all items should be visible now because if you can see, all items are there. But if I say let's say interview and if I click on show all again, all in records should be visible, right? So, in set filter, we just have to do. We just have to check if the filter type is not equal to or whenever we are changing the button currently you can see if i clicked on personal and if i change the button and if i again click this personal is selected right if i changing the top filter this should get removed right no tag should be selected so to achieve that we can simply assign this simply simple tag is equal to again empty we will reinitialize it right and we need to reinitialize the whole array so that is task list is equal to this dot original list whatever the original data all list we have to again uh, make it available in the table right so now you can see filter by tag let's say interview but if i click on show all see again all list are visible right again if i go to filter tag let's say meeting only visible if i click on show all that is visible if i click again no uh what do we say tag button is selected right now last task is on click of show completed only the completed item should be visible so now let's filter that so this same function set filter so here we have to add the condition if the filter type is show completed let's see on the front end what was that show completed if this filter is selected what we need to do is we need to filter the data so this dot task list is equal to and this will go into the else bracket okay in else bracket this will go and here we need to filter the data now how do we know so we have to filter now condition will be m dot is complete equal to equal to true that's it so this is the combination now from all the tasks we are filtering wherever is complete is true and that we are storing it over here so let's just save and check so show all all are there filter tag personal all are there if i click on show all everything is visible but if i click on show completed only one is visible right if i again click on show all all are visible let's try to make three tasks visible see on show completed, only three items are visible because only three are completed. If I click on show all, again, everything is visible. Filter it out, story, interview, whatever the things. Right? So this is how you can achieve to-do app. Right? If you already completed the basic to-do app, now you should try to make it advanced. Try to make it uh, to the next level. Right? some advanced version like you can have a search box over here and you can implement a uh, dynamic search also right so many things again you can do ui also you can more improvise right so that's it with the current video hope this video was helpful to you right so many logical scenarios were there this will definitely help you to increase your logical problem solving right so please do give it a try if you are new to this channel please do like and subscribe my videos Thank you all.